in the E2 elimination reaction, deprotonation and loss of the leaving group happen at the same time. This is generally because the anionic species used is a strong base, strong enough to deprotonate before the leaving group is completely gone. When the nucleophile or base is a weaker species, such as a neutral alcohol or, or water, it's not a strong enough base to remove a proton before the leaving group departs. And here we observe a different mechanism as evidenced by some different kinetics and different trends and reactivity as a function of, for example, the solvent and the structure of the alkyl halide. At high temperatures, and when, when you use these bulky, weak nucleophiles or alkyl halides that um, are not inclined to do a substitution reaction, we observe an elimination reaction that is unimolecular. Its rate depends only on the concentration of the alkyl halide and not on the concentration of base at all. This contrasts with the E2 reaction whose rate depends on both the concentration of alkyl halide and the base. And these are typically run under solvolytic conditions similar to the SN1 reaction. So E1 elimination is a unimolecular elimination process that happens under similar conditions to SN1. The E1 mechanism is fundamentally dissociative. First, we get a carbocation via loss of a leaving group from the alkyl halide, loss of a halide anion produces a carbocation. And then the nucleophile, quote unquote, acts as a Bronsted base and deprotonates at a carbon that is beta to the cationic center, so directly adjacent to the cationic center. So for example here, in the first step we have loss of a leaving group. This forms a carbocation intermediate. Now in the SN1 mechanism, this would be attacked by a nucleophile directly at the cationic center to produce a substitution product. In the E1 mechanism, instead, the nucleophile, quote unquote, or Lewis base, acts as a Bronsted base and deprotonates at a carbon adjacent to the cationic center. So if we think of the cationic carbon as the alpha carbon, deprotonation occurs at the beta carbon. And the product is an alkene and the conjugate acid of the base, as well as the conjugate base of the leaving group, X minus a halide anion. And in terms of kinetics, the first step is generally slow and rate determining, just like the SN1 mechanism. Because we're going from a neutral starting material to charged products and a carbocation, this is an endothermic step universally, and it's almost always the rate determining step in SN1 and E1 reactions. The subsequent proton transfer is fast because this returns us to a neutral alkene product. And so the kinetics and a lot of the rate effects of the reaction are entirely based on this first step. We've already talked about rate effects on the SN1 reaction and similar ideas apply to E1 eliminations. For example, anything that stabilizes this carbocation or the leaving group X minus is going to accelerate E1 elimination. Because both SN1 and E1 involve a common carbocation intermediate, there's a fundamental competition between these two reaction paths that occurs when we get to this intermediate point. So the first elementary step is the same in both mechanisms, and the reaction rate is determined by that loss of a leaving group step. However, the distribution of products is determined by what happens after formation of the carbocation, since deprotonation would lead to E1 elimination, while nucleophilic attack at the cationic carbon would lead to a substitution product. Reaction rates in SN1 and E1 are generally slow because the, the nucleophiles used are, are weak. We're talking about alcohols and water, neutral molecules with less inclination to give away lone pairs, give away pairs of electrons, than anionic species. And so mixtures of substitution and elimination products are inevitable. However, we can favor elimination by taking advantage of the fact that this reaction is entropically favorable, more entropically favorable than SN1. In an SN1 reaction, we're, we're substituting. And so we essentially go from some number of molecules on the reactant side to the same number of molecules on the product side. But in an elimination reaction, we're actually breaking the alkyl halide apart, going from two molecules total, the alkyl halide and the base, to three product molecules, the alkene, conjugate acid of the base, and X minus. So this is entropically favorable, which is why raising the temperature favors elimination over substitution. Bulky reactants can also favor elimination. For example, use of a bulky solvent like tert-butanol, that bulky 
uh, nucleophile or base has a hard time accessing the cationic carbon, kinetically speaking, right? And this tends to favor uh, elimination since the beta hydrogen is more sterically accessible than the cationic carbon, especially for highly substituted cations like tertiary carbocations. As when we were considering the SN1 reaction, when E1 is occurring, when we have a carbocation intermediate, it's very important to consider possible 1-2 rearrangements of the carbocation, and this can have an effect on the products of E1 elimination reactions. So here we showed examples where a carbocation rearrangement led to these substitution products with the nucleophile linked to a different carbon from where the, the leaving group departed. This can also create situations in E1 reactions where the new double bond is not in a position that was originally associated with the leaving group or, or groups appear to have been moved around. For example, we looked at rearrangements of neopental halides under SN1 conditions and if this reaction were to uh, proceed through an elimination pathway, rearrangement would also cause some rather strange results. So the starting neopental bromide here actually has no beta hydrogens, and so it doesn't look like it can engage in elimination at all with no hydrogens connected to the, the beta carbon. However, this carbocation intermediate all of a sudden does have beta hydrogens. We've got a CH2 group here, and we've got three methyl hydrogens here, really six, but the other three, which I'll leave out, are not equivalent, are equivalent to these three that I've drawn in explicitly, rather. And so what can happen here is, is we can actually get elimination here, for example, at the methylene to produce the more substituted product. And this would lead to an alkene in which the substituents, the methyl groups in the original neopental halide, have rearranged. And we end up with this. So the moral of the story here is to carefully consider carbocation rearrangements, particularly when you're dealing with secondary carbocations, as these can lead to situations where elimination is enabled at all, or uh, cases where um, the double bond ends up in a rather unexpected position after deprotonation. Note here that I drew the more substituted alkene product derived from deprotonating at this more substituted position um, to give the more substituted double bond and actually didn't pay attention to this methyl group at all. This is because E1 elimination reactions are universally thermodynamically controlled, meaning the Zaitsev pro product is always the major product. This also means that transalkenes will be favored over cisalkenes in E1 elimination reactions. So this slide shows the idea. The more substituted Zaitsev alkene is the major product in E1 elimination reactions, and transalkenes form in preference to cisalkenes. So for example, in elimination of this substrate, we've got the possibility of a di-substituted alkene product, or two tri-substituted alkene products, one in which this methyl group is cis to the ethyl, and one in which this methyl group is trans to the ethyl. The major product has the methyl and ethyl groups trans, and the tri-substituted, more substituted double bond. This is what we've previously called the Zaitsev product. It's also useful to notice here that the application of heat favors elimination over substitution. And so depending in practice on the actual temperature, the major products are going to be elimination products. And commonly, when you see a reaction scheme written that, that leads to elimination, we'll just use the word heat, since the specific temperature is going to depend on practical considerations that we're not going to worry about.